Was it always right up there? I don't remember it being so red, but anyway. I digress. We haven't activated this choo choo cart before, maybe this is it. Oh, we haven't gone on this one before? Then how did we get here? Oh, we walked! Oh my god, this entire time I thought we took this choo choo cart and we didn't. Okay, my apologies. I am a twit. going all over the place. It's literally a straight line, bro. Okay. Have we done this one before? I feel like we've done this one before. Oh, it can only go the other way. She says I haven't been here before, yet there's no chest here. So I think I have been here before. Hello? get off. Just wanted you to turn around. Sheesh. If you can leave at any time, what's the point in putting an exit? Not bad, as far as treasure is concerned. Everyone hold hands! Don't even think about it, slimes. I said back. Backwards. What the fuck is happening right now? To ashes. Incoming. I can't yeah. see shit. appreciate getting stuck against a wall. I have no idea why she decided to climb the wall when I was... Hello. I'm clearly telling her to go backwards. That made absolutely no sense. Ah! And this is the exit I was trying to get through way back in, like, what, my first day here? Ah! Yay! We finally did that. There are carrots here. Yoink. <laughs> it's like the dendrogana are dancing. They're bob oh, they're bobbing along with my steps. It's cute. <laughs> I'm coming, Adia. You should have set up shop closer to a travel waypoint. Hey. <sighs> What was that? I'm going around. Jeez, please. Thank you. And the third? 
took you longer this time. It was further away. Guess you're enjoying solving the riddles. So, what did you find besides Mora? Just a simple box. Can we open it? But what if there's a creepy doll that pops out? With fireworks that burst with a bang. You have a strange mind. Ooh, yes, adding surprises to mementos is a great idea. I'll suggest it to the other guests too. But in this case, this is the standard box that I provide to guests. The guest that left us behind was quite serious though, so you can rest assured there are no shenanigans. She was a lost student who woke up one day and found herself in the middle of the desert. She stumbled across a blurry mirage while searching for landmarks. It seemed like she hadn't finished her schoolwork, so she couldn't stay long. I was flustered too, unable to show her proper hospitality. Even now I feel guilty about it. Luckily, her standards were really low. Just sitting in a quiet place, stargazing was enough. Her other request was to have a closed, secluded environment to rest in. So I found that cave for her. Before she left, I also sealed the cave with vines, so that she could sleep there in peace whenever she wished. No one in the cipher mentioned a dreamland. No one would bother you sleeping in a cave like that. But waking up in a strange place, that sounds familiar. Maybe as she was sleeping on a carriage and got thrown off, perhaps by a grouchy driver? As Adia said, Paman thinks it would be best to wait until we've cleared our heads, then we can try tackling the tale of the mysterious student again. There's just one just left to find now. Come on, Lenara, let's finish all the returning curios. If you really can't wait, go ahead and read it without Paimon. Give a fast read it, should it take you a moment. Okay. Okay. A blue spotless ceiling. Mm -hmm. A floor of white candy. Soft companions surround me. I too have wings. Something so simple. Anyone would know where to go immediately. Well, it's easy to see at least. Reaching it, however. This should be fun to watch. Could this be another analogy? Well, I, get, I got the sky part. Could be the clouds. I know it's going to be really high. And the highest point is the wheel, isn't it? I think the highest point is the wheel. Anywho, we're going to go read this one. <clears throat> a letter with lovely handwriting. A traveller whom I've never met, if you're reading this letter now, you must be enjoying the wondrous sights of this place, just as I did in the past. May you encounter the sights of your dreams and learn much from the experience. I am a Rotawahi student who fell asleep while observing the skies. After finding myself here upon waking up, I decided to stay a while. The caretaker, Miss Adia, appears to be struggling with the need to repair small mechanisms on the grounds. She didn't respond to my questions, but simply offered me a quiet place to stay, where I might get plenty of rest. Nevertheless, from the way others talk about her, I could tell that she is usually a generous host. It was understandable that she would not have the time to take care of me while being pulled in several different directions. I was unable to get an answer from her, even as I packed up and left. She did, however, give me many gifts, and invite me to try out this attraction. Which is to say, I'm also quite new to this place, and don't have a lot of insights to share. I can only wish you a fun and relaxing experience. You may get a slightly different experience if you were to observe the stars from here. Though the positions of the stars have not changed, their impressions on the sky appear far stronger, and it's much easier to make note of their characteristics. Maybe the special location and my good mood both had something to do with it. After all, our field of vision is far wider here, and the air here is also is also less dry and more pure than regular air in the desert. Most importantly, this place is insulated from monsters and people of ill intent. Not true, there are many monsters here. If you ever have some free time, I'd strongly recommend that you spend some time here to observe the stars. The traditions say that I should leave something here as a testament to my stay, but I don't know what I can leave to you as a gift. I only brought some books, pen and paper with me when I came here and I'd need all of them to write my thesis. Among the gifts that Miss Adia gave me was a sum of Mora, which she recommended I use to purchase furniture, believing it would add warmth, beauty, and comfort to my abode. However, my place has already been filled to the brim with books and star charts. There's no more space for more furnishings, and either way, were I to cross the desert again to bring, uh, return to the academia, I doubt I could make the journey if I brought any more with me. His gifts will be better left to the travellers that will come after me, and thus, I waited for an auspicious stay when wondrous, with wondrous omens before hiding them. Now, these gifts are all yours. I hope they will bring you serenity and joy and pass on to you the protection and fortune of a starry skies. To be honest, I haven't been paying attention to my rewards, which I probably should have been doing. Higher? No, it doesn't say higher. This is new. What are y'all doing to me? 
minus one. Are we going up? Okay. <laughs> Do I keep going up? Or are they going to be down? I don't know. And all these lanterns are real lanterns. Hmm. Uh, they're not up here. They must be down somewhere. Hmm. Oh, this is actually quite far out. I wasn't expecting them to be this far from home. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. Why would you do such a dick move? Outrider Amber. Go. Bad I don't. Finish this. Okay, and one more this way. Oh, you're having a little party up here, are you? Oh, wait, no, no, no. Don't do. Oh, whoopsies, I'm one of those. Oh, they might not drop anything, so it might not matter. Hmm, they're not dropping anything. Never mind. Go. How do I get back? Oh shit. Oh, it is here. We're fine. Hello? Wait, 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 what? Wait, was that not even related? I'm so confused. That was that was three of them. One mustn't have been related. Okay. Awkward. Oh, or is this just a continuation of the first one? And he wanted me to follow him all this way. Where did he go? Where you wanted me to go? <sighs> Back up we go. Where do I go from here? Do I just have to climb? Could of course just fast travel. Be a lot bloody quicker. I've already done this one, have I not? I swear I've already been here. Whatever, I'm leaving. to activate it myself. Thank you. Oh, I have to go up. I have to go up. Ugh. Why do you make life so difficult for me? <gasps> I've only gone this way a trillion bajillion times. Because once is never enough in this game. Guess I have to take a thingy. That sucks for me. Since getting on these damn carts is bloody hard. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Are you going to be able to see it with this thing? Is it that one over there? Or is that one unrelated? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going higher at this point. Oh yeah, it looks like that will take me over. To that little island there. Because there's no other way to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just get high enough to use those thingies. That one's too far away, right? Not that one. He's like, there has to be one before there. Pyong. Gaze from afar. Look, I'll humor it. Success. You give, you receive. Blueprints, you say. I'm kind of just being facetious by gliding. I really should just fast travel. I also kind of went the long way. But that's okay. Actually, I can cut through. Oof. She's got brain damage. Well, Clutching, just think, if you die from the fall, <laughs> at least there'll be other teammates to support you in your death. It's okay, you survived, congratulations. Big time! All three treasures are ours! Oh, that fast. I knew you were no ordinary person, but I didn't expect it to be this easy. How was your experience? Special? I certainly was high up. Whoever left that third treasure behind is a child at heart. They use creative metaphors and their clues were right on the money. Let Pam and guess. Are they some kind of fairy tale author or something? Those aren't metaphors. They're just the real thoughts of a child. The one who left the third treasure behind was actually just a young girl. Wait, a kid? You're joking, right? How did she even get up here? That child overheard her parents talking about a hidden paradise up in the clouds where all sorts of beautiful creatures like finches and crystal flies lived. So she secretly built a big kite, hoping to soar into the clouds and visit her flying friends. I don't know if it was because the wind was ignorant or if it was intentional, but the kite ended up being carried off course. Instead of soaring up to the paradise in the sky, it landed in the middle of the desert. A child didn't find her finches and crystal flies, but she had a wonderful time playing with the gentle hydro idolans, who became her squishy new friends. Wah, slow down there. You talk so fast that Pama can hardly keep up. And for a kid to fly all that way on a giant kite, a lot must have happened along the way. You're going too fast, and it seems like I'm missing out on a lot of details. Look, I really can't explain that sense of wonder that kids feel during their adventures, so you just have to experience it for yourselves. Besides the message from the child, there are also a few pages from her diary in the box, and the details are really something. Before we get to that, there's still one thing left to do. Wait, what? But you said there were three curious. <sighs> and that is way full of ceremony, but also quite important. Oh, I've got to give you something of my own. Should we take care of that first? Yes, you're right. We found all the treasures, so now it's time to leave a treasure of our own behind. It's finally time. Let's put our heads together, Lunara. Where would be the perfect spot to bury our treasure? We have to think this through carefully. We can't be scatterbrained about it. By the... by the... Mm, tent. Someplace high up in the silver button? No. Let's hide near late. No. How about placing it at the entrance? Mm, I don't like any of those options. Let's go for the courtyard. A spot high up, huh? Sounds like a plan. Wait, does I'm gonna have to find it? Oh, rip. 
Hiding it up somewhere high is a great choice. The views and experiences along the way will be truly unforgettable. And of course, mastering the art of scaling difficult terrain is a scarf. What have I done to myself? I thought it was just going to be metaphoric. I didn't realize I'd have to have actually have to do it myself. <sighs> the greater the challenge must satisfy the reward. That's a good point. It's like how a big meal tastes better after a hard day of work. Not really. <laughs> Selling riddles and finding treasures is so satisfying. Someplace high it is then. Let's head out. Hold on, please take us first. This is a special box imbued with the power of the Hydro Dolans, which can greatly extend the storage time of mementos and prevent them from deteriorating over time. And as for the memento you chose, you can keep it a secret from me if you want. Awesome! It really helps. With a fantastic container like this, we can store fresh things like fresh fruit and herbs and yummy food for a long time. But if we don't tell everyone everything to idea, will you still be able to pass along the cipher to other guests? It's all about mystery and surprise. The treasure you leave behind will become the crown jewel of the Returning Curious Project. Every bit as impressive as the original Mora Pocket Watch. I can't wait to see what kind of guest will find your treasure and how they react to your memento. Will I be able to tell at a glance that this keepsake was left behind by you? I'm getting so excited. Um, now it's our time to return the favor. Yep. Oh, Pumman understands now. Then we need to choose a really special memento to make sure that Adia can understand what we're trying to say with just a glance. And then Adia should write us a letter and tell us the good news. Very well, then it is settled. Ah, it's a box we got from her. Yeah, okay. Journal with juvenile handwriting. Hey there, youngster, or grown up, or oldie, or whoever you are. I see you found my treasure and read my diary. I'm an inventor and adventurer. Even Miss Adia thinks I'm a genius, you know. This fantastic water park is the furthest place I've reached so far. I've had a great time here. How about you? It's okay if you haven't been having fun. I'm sure you'll be just like me and find even more cool and distant parks to explore in the future. According to Mum and Papa's story, there's a paradise for finches and crystal flies on top of a cloud. I made this kite to find that paradise and play with them. But when I used the kite to fly, I couldn't find that paradise. Maybe it's because I wasn't flying high enough. But that's fine. I landed in the desert, made friends with a super cool, super huge red bird, and even rode for a long way on the back of a huge creature with many legs. I think they call them scorpions or something? Oh, and also, I met Miss Adia, who managed to convince the big red bird and the big scorpions to turn around and go back to sleep. And after that, she took me to this water park, where the flying balls of water were even more magical than the crystal flies. They gave me tasty apples, assisted me in my search for construction materials, helped me build a new kite, and even took me onto new adventures in mysterious places, so that I can see the scenery from super duper high up. Miss Adia said that if I were to become a famous, super famous adventurer someday, then this place must be my first stop, start of my journey. So, I drew the first super kite that I invented in my diary. Well, the blueprint of the thing anyway. Who knows? Maybe you'll also be able to visit many unexpected new places and meet many new friends after making and using it. Is it a new glider? I'd be very disappointed if it's not a new glider. Oh, and also, before you use it, please make sure to tie a lot of balloons to your body. This is important if you don't want to get hurt when you crash onto the ground. Anyway, all the best of luck. May you fly even higher than I did with this kite. You find many sketches at the end of the diary. This must be the kite that the diary writer is referring to. While the handwriting is messy, the sketch is quite neat. The feature design is well-shaped, has an effective weight-bearing skeletal structure, and many safety features. It is apparent that only a highly educated child could have produced such a high-level design. Maybe the diary writer is a child of scholarly parents, and his, he has been interested in engineering since early childhood. Unfortunately, as it has been designed by a child, the kite can only also be used by a child. Hmm. They got my hopes for a glider. It's too small and unlike a glider, it cannot support the weight of an adult for an extended period of time. Why can't you just make it proportionally larger? Maybe it could become the perfect toy for Paimon, if you were to dedicate a lot of time into actually building it, using the blueprint as a reference, that is. The price is probably be quite painstaking for the unexperienced. Mm, yeah, nah, well, it's not. It's a very uncreative spot, but okay. So what do you want to leave behind? A photo of the two of us? A weapon? Let's leave a sleet, a sleet flower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a sweet flower. A sweet flower? Really? I thought we'd choose something better, something more special. Imagine for a moment. 
An adventurer has been on an incredible journey to the Mirage, finally finding the ultimate treasure of the returning curios left behind by legendary adventurers. Then, ta-da! A sweet flower appears. Pepper wonders what kind of expression they'd have. So why a sweet flower? It's the flower we found at the beginning of the journey. Huh? Sorry, Pama doesn't quite remember. Wait a second. Pama thinks that's right. While we were in Starfell Valley, we picked a few sweet flowers without really thinking about it. So for future Top Shelf Lunar and Super Foody Paimon, sweet flowers are like the starting point, the beginning of everything. For an experienced adventurer, a sweet flower could be very meaningful. Pama gets it now. It's actually a brilliant choice and full of meaning, just as expected from you. Paimon hopes future guests will see it the same way. Yay, sweet flower it is then. Together with Paimon, you choose a memento and place it inside the storage box that Adia provided. As you are writing your message, you have a deep discussion with Paimon about what to include in addition to your brief description of your memento and why it is special. Your experiences in the Valyrian Mirage were so rich and colourful that you didn't know which one to choose. Even the sights and sounds inside the Valyrian Mirage are so spectacular. Ultimately, you settled on a blessing for companionship and happiness without worry. To the traveller who finds this chest, may your travels be filled with joy and free of care, and your companions always be by your side. Enjoy your time vacationing within the Valyrian Mirage. Mission complete. The ultimate treasure of returning curious has been buried. Oof, it's a strange feeling, planting the seeds of a story for the future instead of uncovering something left behind but an unknown predecessor. Hopefully we'll see those seeds sprout soon. They'll definitely bear fruit. Now we just have to wait for Adia's response. Is that it? Is that officially the end of the quest? I don't know. I have no idea. Could be. There might be something else like two seconds later, like we just had before. But yeah, I think that might be the I end of it. For work -life balance, but I think this I was is kind of hoping for more side quests other than just the one. Uh, but it's okay. I, I thought it was very fun. I have thoroughly enjoyed this event. It covered a large area. It covered different types of areas, which is something I thought that the um, Golden Apple Archipelago was lacking. I thought it was a very same, same. But we had some distinct areas here that I appreciated. Um, I'm excluding the special character zones of last year's event, by the way. Uh, I liked the different things in each section so we had the roller coaster the choo-choo cart and it was interesting trying to find out where I wanted to go to get under here I liked the three plays I mean to be fair I only liked two of them one of them was really shit and I'm still kind of pissed that we never got the kraken fight in the the pirate one so I'm kind of disappointed on that front that they sort of promised us something and then just didn't fulfill it and also just the promise of having the treasure be a trap and so someone's going to come and attack us while we're weak but then like no one came and then we kept focusing on preparing for the crack and then like it just ended it was it was a very disappointing ending but I still enjoyed the concept even though it was not much happening so I kind of liked that uh I found that Susimosa's uh performance was kind of super boring but maybe it's supposed to be so that Paimon can critique it really harshly I don't know I didn't enjoy it I was literally falling asleep in my chair, so that was kind of shite. Uh, I really liked the tent. I thought continually going up and up and up and solving, you know, the puzzles along the way, though they were simple puzzles, they weren't exactly challenging. I still found it fun, and I liked this whole region and trying to find all the treasure chests and stuff. I liked that area as well. And then I liked just this main courtyard. It was just a very good hospitable main area. And then plus, I suppose, more tutu card over here. Uh, so, yeah. I think overall the mini games weren't too bad. We had the barking fox one, which was cute. I liked its drift, or it's 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 a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it starts with S. I don't know. You go to one side really quickly. It was really fun. I really liked that. It just it was fun to control, even though you weren't going very fast. Uh, I, the attacking one was. Yeah, the attacking one's always boring, so ignoring that one. The little birdie one, <laughs> I think they should have made it harder. Like, the course is still the same, but you've got to score higher points to get the basic uh, Prima Gems to make you really work for it because I kind of just threw my birds around and just put my hands up in the air and went, eh, job well done, and I got all my Prima Gems anyway. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we could have had a few more challenging ones there. 
but I did enjoy it. Uh, what's the fourth? Th oh, the two-two cards. Um, that was frustrating, actually. This is one of the more frustrating mini games. Not being able to that, not being able to see where you were going on the card, and not being able to control the camera to see the path ahead of you, to know when to bail and jump ship on the tracks and when you should, you know, move to avoid the the bad things that obscure your vision. That was shite. The camera work was absolutely disgusting and kind of ruined my enjoyment of that section. But yeah, still good. Did we ever go into here? I don't remember. But yeah, all in all, I did not mind the story here. I mean, Adia could get a little grading sometimes. Kale got very grading. I don't like self-deprecating people. They get on my nerves. So having two of them in one quest was probably a bit too much. But, eh, I tolerated it. So that was fine. I like to think Kaya again. I loved his outfit. Klee was freaking adorable in her little mage witch outfit. Ah. So, yeah. I would like to come back here next year and either have more parts to it, have different games within the same location, or just have more people here. I just would like to see it again in a new a new manner. Yeah. But I very much enjoyed it. This is all assuming that we're not going to come back in a day's time when they give me more quests. <laughs> but I enjoyed it.